ask you to introduce yourself? Uh, my name is Professor Michael Cox. I'm from the London School of Economics. I'm co-director of Ideas and I've been one of the conveners of one of the panels here called Global Europe. Thank you. Uh, my first question would be what was for you the most inspiring or uninspiring ideas you've heard in your panel? Well, I think there were two things which came out of the panel I organized of the various speakers. Um, I think the first thing I'd say is that everybody agrees that the world we're living in is shifting rapidly, internal to Europe in terms of the economic problems, internal to the United States in terms of its economic and political problems after Iraq, the emergence of Asia, the rise of China. I think everybody's agreeing that uh, Europe in this new world, and it is an emerging new world, has to rethink itself and to think very seriously about where it is going to be in five or ten years' time. In other words, to get outside of thinking internal to Europe and thinking how this world is changing, what its relationship is going to be with the United States, China, and uh, and, and, its, and its own neighborhood. And I think that was a very inspiring part. I have no great disagreements with any of my speakers, it goes without saying. I agreed with all of them because they were all wonderful. I think if there was a disagreement, I think the one disagreement which came out was really the disagreement between the policy makers and the academics. So Colin Budd did a wonderful job as a discussant, but he kind of raised this question as, are academics too theoretical, th theoretical too conceptual, maybe always wanting to be more uh, uh, pessimistic about the world and, and thinking that we can develop strategies, whereas I think for the policy makers it's a, it's, it's a kind of everyday event, it's events driving uh, policies and one should maybe be a little less theoretical. I think my view is we should bring both of those strengths together from the academic and the policy world to bring a, what I would call a higher synthesis. Yes. Thank you. Um, related to the panel, uh, Professor Wellstead has mentioned the uh, loss of impact uh, of the US in China. Uh, what would be, according to you, the, the, the impact of this on, on diplomatic relationship between the United States and the European Union? Well, it, 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 there's a number of issues there, but maybe just picking up on, on a couple. I mean, firstly for Europe, uh, I mean, one of the things he also added was while Europe may not have as much uh, diplomatic, uh, while it doesn't have so much economic, it doesn't have so much dip diplomatic role in relationship to the European Union. The EU-China relationship, I think what he was saying, just to bring the EU back in again rather more precisely, it's, it, it's got a strong economic dimension, but, the, but China itself doesn't think too much of the European Union, doesn't understand it basically, I think that's what he was saying. But one specific thing he picked up on, which was really very important, was the question of this arms embargo. Now, the United States has very strong views on this arms embargo still. It doesn't like the arms embargo. It, it prefers this arms embargo to continue. It doesn't like to see Europeans or anybody else trying to get rid of the arms embargo. And what I think he was raising was this question is whether Europe itself should get rid of this arms embargo to the European Union. If China becomes more important economically in Europe, then inevitably there will be diplomatic pressure. This, I think, could be the cause of some, some future disagreements between the European Union and the United States. All right. Thank you very much. For